Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be making what is most likely going to be the best tray bake you have ever had. Um, we're making butter chicken in a tray and it's going to be super easy and you can make it ahead, you can get it all ready in the morning and then when you get home from work or wherever you've gone you can just chuck it into the oven for 45 minutes and you are good to go. And so let's get started. First you're going to need half a cup of yogurt. Just like plain yogurt. Don't be going using your strawberry yogurt. That's not going to be good. All right. Half a cup of yogurt. And then to that, you are going to add some lemon juice. Just a tablespoon of lemon juice. I did have some fresh lemons, but I don't know what happened to them. Maybe they got used. All right, a tablespoon of lemon juice. And a tablespoon of ginger. I just went to find my ginger, but it is all gone. We had some in like a, you know, this stuff that you have in a, have in the fridge, in like a jar. Um, so I'm just going to put in half a tablespoon of the dried, maybe like a quarter of a tablespoon of the dried stuff. But using the fresh stuff is much better. My niece made dinner for us a few months ago. And we have like a storage thing in the in the garage where we have it's like a little shop basically in the garage and so instead of looking in the fridge to find some garlic she just went and got all brand new stuff out of the garage so there was it went off it went off that's what happened to it okay moving on uh two cloves of garlic or two scoops of we're just gonna be making it it's more simple for ourselves all right, so the garlic, and then you want turmeric powder. Where is my turmeric? I did get everything out, but now I can't find it all. Oh, right here in front of me. All right, you want one teaspoon of turmeric. It makes it nice and gives it that nice color. And then two teaspoons of garam. I always want to call it graham masala, but I think it's called garam masala. Which is pretty, it's, garam masala is just like all the spices, like the Indian spices, all mixed together for you. Which makes it a lot easier. Alright, two teaspoons of that. You might be able to hear the rain. Because it is still raining. We live in Queensland and it has been raining non-stop. No, raining and storming. It's not been the most fun summer so far. Because it's just constantly wet. But the grass outside and the gardens are just growing like growing like weeds I guess you could say we mowed the lawns on like last week and they're already overgrown already I don't anyway okay garam masala and half a teaspoon of chili powder my kids don't mind spice but I'm just gonna put in like a shake if you like spicy stuff go put more in whatever just as you like it all right and then a teaspoon of Cumin. Cumin or cumin? What do you call it? And then some salt. I didn't get the salt out. Just some salt. All right, and that is all you need for the marinade. You may also still be able to hear my children. They are watching, um, what's that show? Tangled. I didn't quite, we might mix this together first. I didn't, when I ordered my groceries, they didn't have the chicken that I wanted. So they've given it to me in like little containers and it's not quite right, but never mind, it'll be fine. All right, you can marinate this overnight. You could, to be honest, you don't even need to marinate. It all just gets like cooked together and I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. But if you're in the morning and you want to get it all prepped for the evening, just do the marinating and I'm sure it, maybe it makes it taste better what we did last time we made this actually is after we cooked the um the chicken on the barbecue before we put it into the oven and it was just those little chari bits made a lot of difference but you don't if you don't have time that's fine we're probably not going to do it tonight because it's raining outside all right so in this I have eight um chicken chicken thighs you can do it with breast 
we've done it with breast before. It's not the best, to be honest. I think um, chicken breasts are just too lean. You need a bit of um, a bit of fat and stuff to make it good. Um, the recipe calls for a bone in thighs, but no one in this house likes chicken really with with bones in, unless it's like chicken nibbles, and then we like it with bones. But anything else, we don't really want bones in our chickens. All right. Okay, so that is all done. You can chuck that into the fridge to marinate. It's about lunchtime now, so it's just going to go in until dinner time. All right, we will tidy up a little bit here. I'll just move the stuff out of the way. And we will now move on to the sauce, which is also very easy. All right. This is where I'm going to add in the things that aren't in the recipe, but what I like in my butter chicken. Okay, we need two tablespoons of melted butter. We don't have a microwave, so it's... Okay, that's a little more than two tablespoons. But I just chucked in the bits of butter that I had left over. You know, like all the little bits that you end up with in the fridge. I just chucked them all in and melted them together and got rid of all that mess in my freezer, in my fridge. All right. Two tablespoons of melted butter, one cup of tomato passata. Also don't have tomato passata, but what it is really is just blended up tomatoes. So that's what I did, blended up canned tomatoes, and we need one cup of that. I think you could probably, if you didn't want to blend it separately, you could just um, put it all, all the sauce mixture and blend it all together. Actually, I've just decided I'm going to double this because my kids really like the sauce like the next day to dip like hot chips and all sorts into. Okay, so we're going to double. So then it doesn't really matter that I had too much butter. All right, so two cups of... Oh, hopefully this is going to be big enough, this container. I might have to find a big one. Two cups of passata. Um, it says three quarters of a cup of cream, so that is going to be one and a half cups of cream. All right, one. Oh, it's going to be pushing it. And a half. It may just, I don't think the lid is going to fit on. All right, we'll see how we go. We might have to change it up a bit. Yeah, this lid has like an indent, so. Okay, and then it says white sugar. I forgot that. We need one and a half tablespoons, so three tablespoons of sugar. One, two, three. Okay, I'm definitely going to have to get a bigger bowl. Just bear with me a second. This is what we will do. We will use uh, a Tupperware container. Oh, look at that. That's... That's perfect. All right, that can get washed. All right. Mix all that in. Okay. And that is pretty much where the sauce mixture ends. But we are going to go in with about a teaspoon of cinnamon because it makes it so good. Um, and some cardamom pods. We do five. One, two, three. That's six. So we only want, we want five. And you need to sort of like squash them. You don't need to get all like the seeds out, but you do need to squash them so that you can, they can release the seeds by themselves. And one thing that I didn't get out was the cloves. Oh, that one went flying. Oh my gosh, despite it raining, it is so hot today. I might, I was thinking about taking the kids for a swim. Don't mind swimming in the rain a bit. And I forgot to get out the cloves. And three cloves. It's always a gamble who's going to end up eating the cloves. Three cloves and there was something else. Maybe that is it. All right. 
mix it all together. Just like that. And then you can just chuck that into the fridge as well, along with the marinating chicken. And when it is time to cook it, you just heat up the oven and you pour it, pour the sauce into the baking tray and then you put the chicken on top of it and for 45 minutes in the oven, you're good to go. And while that's cooking, you can just chuck on, a, chuck on some rice. It'll be perfect. All right, we'll see you back in uh, several hours and we can see what it's going to be like when we put it in the oven and then we can take it out of the oven and it will be beautiful. The kids actually want me to make naan bread and we make the best naan bread. I have come up with the secret to making the best naan bread. There's like a secret ingredient. I'll tell you later. Okay, I'm back. I remember what I forgot. Star anise, that is the other secret ingredient. So you need two star anise, but we're just gonna put in, whoops, that much because they're already all broken up. I think that is like the secret ingredient. Star anise. All right, now back into the. Okay, it is now dinner time and time to put our butter chicken into its tray and into the oven. All right, so you want to start with your sauce and just pour it in. It is going to get quite, it can get quite, uh, what's the word, runny. But I have found if you just um, take the chicken out at the end, and put the sauce back into the oven, it makes it, it thickens it up. I always take the chicken out anyway and like shred it a bit, and then I put it back into the sauce after it's thickened up. All right, There's the sauce. Yeah, I'll put that in there. And then we have our chicken. Because, yum. Hopefully this all fits into one dish. Often when I do it, when I have a bit more chicken, I do it in two trays. But we should be okay, I hope. Oh, we've got to fit one more piece in there. Oh, hopefully that will be all right. Yeah, usually I use two trays, but I didn't have as much chicken today, so I was hoping to put it into just one tray. I'm going to put the extra marinade on top. Don't want to be wasting any of the flavour. There we go. And that is all done. It is ready just to pop into the oven, which is at like 180 And we will be back in 45 minutes. I also, while I was this afternoon, I made our naan bread. Can you see how like spotty? That's how you know it is good. Like that. So I have 12 naan breads and, okay, so the secret is to put in two tablespoons of everything but the bagel seasoning. I have a video for that that I made that I will post sometime this week but everything but the bagel seasoning and then if you want to be extra extra fancy a table two tablespoons of black cumin seeds they are the best i saw i have been looking for these black cumin seeds for months 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 and months and then i saw on one of my friend's stories that she had found some black cumin seeds i was like oh my goodness where did you find them and she said oh i found them at the shop i can send them to you and I haven't like seen this girl since I was in high school. So we're looking like almost 20 years ago. And she was so gracious and willing to send them to me. She lives in like a different country and she said, I'll send them to you. So thank you very much, Arij. I appreciated your black cumin seeds. All right, we'll wait for that to cook and I'm gonna put on some rice and I may even make some poppadoms because they are the kids' favorites as well. Okay, it is ready. It is out of the oven and it is perfect. And we are going to eat our dinner. The table is set, the poppadoms are made, the naan bread is made. The rice just needs to be fluffed 
and we can have our dinner. I will show you a close up of it because it is beautiful. I am so happy with how this turned out. The chicken was tender and juicy and we even had some for leftovers the next day. Anyway, we have our butter chicken is ready, the naan bread is ready, the papadoms are ready, the rice is ready and we are going.